streaming. Uh, I did this work with my student, Yusuf uh, Sharab, and this work was sponsored in part by a National Science Foundation grant. Uh, this is an outline of the talk. Um, let me start with the introduction. Basically, as you know, power consumption has become a major concern, uh, concern in uh, live video streaming system, especially for those that employ uh, battery operated devices, including automated video surveillance wire and wireless sensor networks. In this system, prolonging, uh, prolonging the battery lifetime is a primary concern because it has so many implications on system cost and availability. Uh, as you know, uh, in video streaming systems, energy is consumed at uh, different stages, at the capturing stage, at the encoding stage, and at the transmission, uh, transmission stage. Uh, and all these stages will operate in a pipeline-like fashion. Uh, power consumption at the receiver is also important, but to a much lesser degree. We focus here on power consumption at the server side. Uh, this paper analyzes power uh, consumption in the three main phases of live video streamings. Basically, we develop uh, a power consumption model for each one of these phases, and then we validate them individually, and also in terms of the aggregate power consumption. Uh, we, the developed models were based on 500 different experiments. Each one was repeated at least three times, some cases actually four times, which led to more than 1,500 uh, experiments. So my student was so busy uh, conducting all these experiments to be able to get some accurate models. Um, prior studies focused primarily on one aspect and phase, and they were limited, as, as we'll see later on. Uh, this paper has been motivated by our ongoing work on, uh, on power-aware design of uh, automated video surveillance systems, and that work uh, requires uh, power consumption models that are appropriate, accurate, and simple. So uh, be because we wanted to have these, then we resorted actually to conduct all these experiments to be able to get these models that will help us in the system design. Uh, Summary of the main contributions, we analyze the three main phases in live video streaming systems and provide accurate and simple power consumption models. For video encoding, we develop a model for H264, considering important factors such as the mode selection, number of, number of reference frames, sub-pixel, motion estimation search, etc. Uh, the developed uh, model for uh, full mode selection of X264 uh, can be used to, to find the total number of oper uh, operations that are required and the number of, uh, of each type of these operations, such as uh, multiply, divide, add, etc. And we analyze the impacts of important encoding parameters on power consumption, including quantization parameter, number of reference frame, uh, ME algorithms, and uh, uh, ME range, motion estimation range. We develop models also for the bit rate because in most cases tuning different parameters is often uh, based on a trade-off between uh, energy and bit rate. Uh, we also compared the power consumption of each phase and study different encoders, including MPEG-4 and MJPEG for comparative purposes, purposes but I'm not going to focus on this here. We showed that the overall computation complexity of all phases can be approximately be modeled as a linear function of the pixel rate. The pixel rate can be defined as the product of the spatial and temporal resolution of the raw video. And we conducted several, uh, many uh, extensive real experiments. Prior work uh, started, uh, focused primarily on one aspect, and uh, it was uh, limited. Uh, for example, one study developed a power consumption model for video capturing for a specific on-chip uh, video circuit for, fire, uh, for wireless video sensor networks. Uh, transmission power consumption was analyzed in uh, another study. 
uh, encoding power consumption was studied by, <coughs> was discussed by many studies, including those which are actually the most, the closest to this work. One of them developed a power rate distortion framework for a generic video encoder, analyzing the effects of spatial resolution and frame rate. And the paper measured the power consumption of an X264-3 encoder, but did not consider weighing the spatial and temporal resolution and other encoding parameters. Uh, none of these studies analyze X264 or consider the capturing power consumption. And as you know, X264 has so many features and complexities such as adaptive lock size, etc. Uh, in addition, the impacts of important parameters of power consumption were not analyzed, such as quantization parameter, number of reference frames, search range, motion estimating, uh, estimation uh, algorithms, etc. Uh, there are also other work that included the cross-layer approach to provide trade-offs between coding and communication power consumption. Uh, other studies considered how to improve uh, the video encoding process, but they were not really too much related to this work, so I'm not going to talk about them. Uh, some very quick background information. I mentioned earlier about a study that presented uh, uh, that developed a specific vision system based on uh, a smart sensor called Parisi. And uh, another study uh, character characterized the power consumption for that specific system, and they provided a simple uh, model for that. Uh, for video encoding, uh, as you know, video data has so much redundancies uh, in both spatial and temporal, and uh, by putting just the differences, we can actually save uh, so much in terms of the, the bitrate. Uh, basically, the main uh, steps we have intra and inter prediction, transform and quantization, and then we have uh, entropy encoding. Uh, the main features of X264 it allows up to 16 reference frames to be considered. It uses variable block size, which make it more complex. Uh, now, within each uh, intermode, encoder has a wide choice of possible motion vectors, and rate distortion optimization mode selection is used uh, to find the, the best uh, coding mode for each macro block based on which this model, uh, the rate uh, distortion opt optimization, as the name suggests, considers both rate and uh, distortion. For video transmission, there is one paper that discussed uh, uh, a model for power consumption. We simplified, it, uh, simplified that model and we adapted for uh, this environment and we valid valid validate the model by many experiments. How did we run the experiments? We, we had different configuration, but the main configuration here, we have a laptop that we use with, with a camera. The camera captures uh, a video rendered on uh, a display, and the, this laptop will encode the video, and then we'll transfer it to, to a client. So the rendered video includes scenes of five children uh, running and playing in a zoo, which so much detail, so much fast movements. Uh, then the camera feeds this video to the laptop, which encodes the video using FFmpeg in case of MPEG4 and uh, MJPEG, and X264 in the case of H264. And the streaming is actually conducted using VideoLand VLC streaming server. Uh, to minimize the effect of other processing running on the computer, uh, basically we ran the computer with the bare minimum set of processes and drivers, and the power consumption for all these bare minimum processes were also subtracted. And each experiment was repeated three to four times, uh, and the results were, were averaged. Uh, <coughs> to separate the power consumption for each phase, we had to run uh, a couple of experiments to do so, a few experiments. Now let's talk about the, the modeling. There's so much details about the models, the derivation, etc. so I'm not going to dig into these details. You can find them in the paper, so I'll just focus on the main idea. Otherwise, it's going to be so boring to go over all these in this presentation. Uh, basically, for power consumption, the, the per-frame power consumption uh, 
for a video sensor of n by n pixels and k uh, analog to digital processing units can be given as follows. So we have a constant times n times m plus uh, another constant times b. Uh, we can include the effect of the, the frame rate. We can multiply by, by the frame uh, rate so we take care of the uh, spatial resolution. And then we found out through experiments that we need, we need another constant. And this constant will represent the power consumed even when no capturing actually takes place, which is CJ. And because there is a relationship between K and N or M, so if you capture that relationship, most of the time K is going to be equal to N or a fraction to it in general. So uh, we can take that into consideration. And because if we deal with meg megapixel cameras, then the N times M term will dominate. And then we have an approximate model right there. We can write that model in terms of the pixel rate, which is L. L becomes what? F, which is the frame rate, times N times M. N times M is basically the number of pixels in the, in the frame. And here we compare the model and the simplified version with the actual data, and we see it matches closely. For encoding, the motion estimation complexity is going to be the sum of the integer and fractional <coughs> complexities. Uh, in the full search algorithm, if the full search algorithm is used, uh, and if the maximum displacement of s pixels in a frame is allowed, then we have two s plus one to the power two locations that we have to search for. And for each, we have to uh, conduct a certain number of sad or uh, sum of absolute difference uh, operations. So we can basically have the complex complexity as follows. Here we include the number of frames, uh, n times m divided by pq, and pq here is the, the block size basically. Uh, f is the frame rate, r is the number of references, and here we have a term that represents the number of sad operations, and then a term that represents the, the impact of the, the block size. We do the same with some other details to find the, the, the complexity for the fractional motion estimation uh, complexity. And then we add these two things together. Then we have this term, which, and here we wrote it as a, a function of L, which represents the uh, overall motion estimation complexity. Now, what we want, we want to model the whole encoding power consumption, and then the whole aggregate or the aggregate power consumption. Now, for the, we know that the, basically the encoding uh, complexity, the encoding computational complexity is going to be a sum of complexity for inter and intra prediction, and then for uh, another term here, which will represent the complexities for uh, for transforming and quantization, and the third term will represent uh, the effect of uh, entropy encoding. So we have to add these three together, and the second term, as you see, depends on the number of non-zero macro blocks. So this term is the quantiza for quantization and uh, transforming. Uh, now we have we can use the the model for inter prediction and interprediction complexity motion estimation in order to to feed into that uh, model and then we can find the per frame computational complexity uh, and here we average it, average it based on the different types of frame i b and p frames and then we find it here the computational complexity per second by multiplying by the the frame rate now, the power consumption, we know it's going to be, if we're using dynamic voltage scaling, then we have, uh, it's going to be Xe to, to the power of 3. So it's a cube, cubic relationship. So now, we, I want to show very quickly the model that we developed for full mode selection of uh, uh, 
X264. Basically, for each macro block, the full mode, the, uh, full mode selection finds the mode combination with the least RDO, rate distortion optimization cost, among all possible mode combination. So for each macro plug and, uh, and a specific mode combination, the process will proceed into finding the following. We have to compute the prediction macro plug, the residual macro plug, encode the residual, uh, residual then decode the macro plug, reconstruct the macro plug, compute the distortion, and then compute the, uh, the cost. And this process is repeated for each mode combination, and then the mode combination with the minimum cost will be selected for that particular micro plug. Uh, that will require so many RDE calculations. Uh, for example, for inter intra mode, we might may have up to 592 RDO operation, and for a limited setting, we have 41. Then we have to add them together. So this is so many different combinations. So the, basically, the model that we developed for this process will be as follows. So here, f the, uh, times n uh, times m divided by 16 by 16, which is the micro block size. Then we go, we have the sum over all the different modes. And then we have different components. The first component represents basically the number of operations to compute the prediction macro block. Then the second one, the number of operations to uh, to compute the residual transform quantization and entropy coding, then the number of operations to compute the inverse, quantiza uh, 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 the inverse quantization and inter inverse transform and reconstruction uh, for that mode, then NDI, which is the number of operations to compute the distortion for mode combination for that mode combination, and then we have the number of operations to compute the cost J for that mode combination, and then we have the the number of operations to compute the, the minimum cost among all mode combination. This is not going to be very easy to find. So here we have an, this model for the end prediction, which is the first term that we find here. And here, this one also has different factors. And those factors we can find just by using these. We develop these lookup tables. We can use them in order to find the uh, number of operations required for uh, for this, this table shows the number of operations to compute a 4x4 four four Luma prediction uh, block. This one shows the number of operations to compute a 16x16 16 16 Luma prediction uh, block. This one for 8x8 eight, uh, eight eight chroma. And uh, for the other uh, factors in the model, we also have another table that shows how we can, the number of operations required for each one of, one of these. So by this model, we'll be able actually to find exactly the number of operation and the number of operation of each type for the full mode uh, selection. Now, based on the prior uh, developed models, we can actually write the power consumption uh, as follows. So basically, here we have we have many constants, and we have R, L. R is the bit rate. L is going to be the the pixel rate. So we see the power consumption is going to be a function of uh, both the bit rate and the pixel rate. So, but the bit rate is, is output, which makes it like the bit rate is after you do the encoding and everything, you have that bit rate. So, but then actually, after extensive experiment, we found that there's going to be a linear relationship between the bit rate and the pixel rate, and by so we have a linear relation between the pixel rate and the bit rate. And then we will, were actually able to approximate uh, the power consumption as follows. It's going to be now only a function of the, of the pixel rate. This one shows the, the results of the actual data compared with the, with the model. Here we, vary, we, show, we show the pixel rate by varying both the the spatial resolution and temporal resolutions. Here we show the data by varying only one thing at a time. So here we only have for each, for different, we show the data for different frame, frames per second for uh, a specific resolution. And here we show for different resolutions a specific frame rate. So here it shows basically the individual results. Uh, we can use the model in order to find the impact of the the number of reference frames on power consumption as well as the bit rate. Uh, 
And here, this shows the result, and we can see that the model is uh, reasonably accurate. And here we show the impact of different uh, motion estimation algorithms uh, on power consumption and, and bit rate. And here we study the impact of the motion estimation range. From the developed model, we can see that it's going to be a have this function with the with the power consumption and the and the rate, and here basically it shows the, the validation results. Then we show the impact of the quantization parameter. This was a little bit tricky, but we find we find it here as uh, an exponential relationship. And we, we see that has a great impact on power consumption and, and bit rate. And here it shows the, the comparison between the actual data and the, the model. Uh, we did the same thing for MPEG-4. We found another model, different, a similar model with different, different clients, and we did also the validation. So something similar we developed for MJPEG, and we have validated it here. Uh, now, for video tra uh, uh, transmission, basically, we uh, for the same technology, platform, distance, path loss, uh, or environment, the model can be simplified as follows. So here it's going to be just a, 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 a linear with the with the, uh, with the bit rate, but we had to add a constant. And here it shows the validation results. Okay, so now when we put, uh, what happened? Sorry. Okay. Now we've put all these models together for power, uh, for capturing, for encoding, and uh, transmission. We get this total power, uh, power consumption for X264, MPEG4, and MJ. So with these simple models, we can just plug them in and find the, the total power consumption in, li in a live video streaming uh, system. So uh, in summary, we have analyzed power consumption uh, for the three different stages in live streaming systems. Uh, and we have uh, uh, developed a model for X64 standard considering important factors such as mode selection, number of reference frames, sub-pixel uh, motion estimation. We have analyzed the impacts of important encoding parameters on power consumptions, such as uh, quantization parameter, number of reference frames, ME algorithm, and ME <coughs> range. And the models were validated by extensive experiments. Uh, the main results, basically, the overall computation complex of all phases can be modeled as a linear function of the, the bit rate. So this is a very significant uh, conclusion. So it makes things very easy. Uh, for high spatial and or temporal resolutions, the video encoding consumes more than 90% of the power, while capturing consumes less than 6% and transmission less than 4%. Of course, for the system under study, we may get different results. But, but here, relatively, the relative uh, factors is the most important. We, we should not look at the absolute results because it may vary from system to one system to another. X264 uh, consumes more than four times the power consumption by earlier standards, and uh, in X64 encoding, intra, inter, and intra predictions consume much more energy than transform quantization and uh, interpret coding and decoding. Uh, the quantization parameters affect power consumption in an exponential fashion. Uh, other encoding parameters, such as the number of uh, reference frames, search range, sub-pixel <coughs> search range, and motion estimation algorithm, uh, vary the power consumption by up to 10%. Uh, turning, uh, tuning these parameters should be done based on an energy and bit rate trade-off. Uh, and the complexities of interprediction, interprediction, RDO mode selection, and subpixel sub search are impacted primarily by the temporal and spatial resolution, which were factored in the pixel rate. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions?
at some point I got lost in the equations. <laughs> yeah, okay. But but practically speaking, I from your conclusion slides, slides, I get the impression that you know, given the available bandwidth, if I want to minimize power consumption, I should take the cheapest possible uh, or the oldest uh, encoding standard and just fill up the available bandwidth and that will give me the least the lowest power consumption not necessarily it's a good point but not necessarily now so what's the the benefit of, of this work like having here like we characterize power consumption so we have models for these uh, different phases and then we have an aggregate power consumption model now this will help us like in designing power uh, power aware multimedia streaming systems such as, such as surveillance systems or sensor networks etc now how can we like with these models can help us know like how we can adapt the videos like if you have a certain bandwidth concerns etc now how, how can you do the adapt adaptation there are so many different ways you can do the adaptation you can do it based on resolution based adaptation or you can do it based on frame rate adaptation or based on SNR adaptation etc and each one will have certain uh, advantages, dis disadvantages. But with these models, you'll be able even to decide which technique will be the best and how you can combine them in the best way possible. Actually, this was our initial objective. We wanted to design like a real uh, automated video uh, surveillance system. Then we wanted to do the adaptation, etc. Then we wanted certain power consumption models. Then we had to run this experiment. So, but. Those are very important. They will tell us how we can adapt uh, the videos. But does not really the conclusion does not really say that you should go with the older standard. Of course, we should use the like the best standard because actually, like like it can achieve very like especially if the bandwidth is like of a greater concern, then you really have to have a very good compression algorithm in order to be able to provide that one while maintaining very good quality uh, that you have. But then how we can scale, how we can adapt the video to satisfy these bandwidth requirements, then you have to do certain adaptation techniques and then you have to consider trade-offs in the quality and also the, the energy. One thing, but to anchor this into reality, uh, if you encode the uh, an H.264 stream of uh, 720p, how many watts do you expect to use? Ah, okay, so, okay, now this one is a very good question. Now, it really depends. If you are doing hardware-based, so oh, basically I'm, I'm the I'm saying in yeah. your experiment. Yeah, in, uh, okay, because even like, when you do like the real experiments, either you can do it by, by software, or you can do it by, by hard, like chip-based approach, or you can do it by by software, which is an algorithm. So, so I, I'm, look, I'm looking for whether you whether you you are looking at uh, 10 watts or 100 watts. Okay. So basically, like the cameras that we use, we use like a certain um, uh, like a power surveillance camera in particular, and that surveillance camera was able to achieve the th the three stuff: coding at very good resolution. Uh, and uh, so ca capturing, encoding, and uh, transmission in less than 10, 10 watts. Right. But it really, it really depends, again, like you know, if you want to do it by, ha by software, Thank you. it's going to take more. OK. Last question. So did you ever compare the uh, power usage used on compression to background? Uh, power usage of the components. Yeah, this is a very good point. But uh, background, what do you mean by the background? Background. Whatever it will need to be on when okay. you're not doing it. Ah, okay, yeah, definitely. So here, like, basically, we, like, when we run the experiment with the, with the, with a laptop, then you have certain processes that are running which will consume certain energy, right? So here, what we did is that we first run it with minimum level of processes and bare minimum le level of processes and drivers and then like whatever power consumption that will be we'll measure it and then subtract it after running the experiments we have to this is why we have to do several experiments so that we subtract that that offset i still have a question do you see a possibility to simplify your model because it's at the moment quite complicated but in the conclusions you showed that you could conclude some simple rules so could you 
make a simple model of yeah. the power consumption. So now here, like basically what, uh, what we did in this paper, because we wanted to make things as simple as possible, you know, like when I go, I had to go through all the process to show you the details. But th at the end, we have these models. Like this table shows you the different models for different okay. types of encoders. And this one shows you the total power consumption. And did you consider MPEG-2? Because I think many cameras are using still MPEG-2. Ah, no, we just considered that. We barely focused on X264, but we included MPEG-4 and MJPEG just for comparative purposes. We're not even focusing on them. Thank you very much uh, for everybody. Thank you for the speaker.